They can't do nothing unless they got everything. We can't preach unless we got a mic. There was a time when I watched my grandmother stand up without a mic, without a sound system, and preach in a big church just by the sound of her voice and enjoyed every moment of it. Can we praise them? enough to do what I gotta do. This is why, this is why Jesus could take a few pieces of bread and a few fishes and feed a multitude because he realized whatever God gives me, it'll be enough to do what I gotta do when I gotta do it. I thank you God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. This is not even the point I'm trying to make. make no stress. Let me get back on track. Sitting in the kitchen. Watch your mom cook. <laughs> My excitement. Would always lure me closer and closer. Mom would always give me the same water. Move back when you go over the curtain. For some reason, that warning was never seen into my mind. Until one day, when I got too close, and my skin came in contact with that boiling hot surface. As I stood there with black and glistening fingers, the pain I felt in that moment was enough of a deterrent for me to never get too close to the stove again. The pain that I felt in that moment was necessary because I had to feel in order to learn. The problem, though, with this generation is we continue to go back and touch the same stone, getting the same results, but we refuse to deviate from our behavior. Therefore, we keep going around and around and around. I don't know about you, but as a pastor, I am tired of praying for people's burnt-up fingers just because they go back and touch the same stone. Which provoked them to move 
into what God had for them. You see, you don't got to worry about what the enemy brings because God has already seen it and engrafted it into his plan. When people persecute you, Joseph, when they place you in a pit, be encouraged because God has paved your way to the palace straight through the pit. When, when you're the victim of betrayal, don't sweat it because Judas' betrayal is going to take you from the garden to the cross. The cross represents your destiny and you can't fulfill your destiny in the garden. So that person who betrayed you just placed you into position to fulfill your purpose. You would think the enemy would have given up by that. Because everything he brings to destroy you only builds you up. When he tries to weaken you, he only makes you stronger. When he tries to take from you, he only equips you to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. 
He endured the cross because of what it was bringing him into. The hell that you're going through is producing some heavenly characteristics. Greatness is coming forth out of your previous time. You have to get through this difficult season because of what it's producing in your life. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Paul commanded Timothy to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He told him this because he understood we have to get through what we're going through because of what it's bringing us into. I'm telling you, the sufferings of this present time, oh, I feel that in my spirit, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed in you. I'm telling you, the suffering. No matter what you feel like in the moment, no matter what kind of pain you're experiencing, no matter what kind of discomfort, I'm telling you the sufferings of this present time, they're not even worth comparing, they're not even worth measuring to the glory that is to be revealed in you, to what God is about to produce out of you. I want to help somebody. I want to help somebody to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I want to tell somebody to endure, endure the pain of the moment, endure the season of lack, endure the persecution, endure the uncertainty, endure the attack, endure the sickness. Don't back down, move forward. Don't stop, keep going. Don't give in, overcome. No matter what you're going through, don't let it beat you. Endure, endure, endure. Wipe your tears away and endure, endure, endure. Fight off your depression and endure, endure, endure. Fight off your exhaustion and endure, endure, endure. Fight off the persecution and endure, endure, endure. Smile when you want to frown. Endure, endure, endure. Treat people good and treat you bad. If you can get through it. Amen. Oh, if you can get through what you're going through. Come on now. God has shown me what he's bringing you into and it's beautiful. It's more than you expect. Come on now. God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or imagine. Come on now. God's going to give you more than you ask for. What you thought of, what you predicted, what you imagined in the caverns of your mind was too small for God. That's why He didn't give you what you asked for because He's trying to bless you on a whole other level than what you're asking for. Sometimes we settle for less when God only wants to give us the best. You got to endure, endure, endure. Be not weary and well do it. For in due season you shall reap. If you faint not, don't give in, don't collapse under the pressure, don't let this break you down, because I'm telling you, every seed that you put in the ground is about to come up. God is about to bless you, press down, shaking together, and running over. God's about to open up the windows of heaven and pour you something you cannot control. Unless you understand the pain has a purpose. 
you can't take the treatments that they want you to take unless you understand the pain has a purpose. You can't smile through bankruptcy unless you understand that the pain has a purpose. You can't have joy in the midst of chaos unless you understand the pain has a purpose. But what do you understand? That the pain has a purpose. You can go through whatever you got to do. Is preparing you for your destination. I know, I know that you want God to do a removing job. But I'm here to tell you He's doing an improving job. If God doesn't take you out of the fire, He's going to show up in it. He told Paul, My grace is sufficient for me, but my strength is made perfect. You have to feel the pain. You have to go through what you're going through. But know that His grace is sufficient for you. When you come out, you're coming out as pure gold. And when it's all 